So um, maybe I should start giving you a little background about myself. Um, I have bounced between industry, the government, and academia over my last close to 30 years uh, in, in, this, um, in this field. Most recently, I, I am at, uh, at SAP, but what brought me there was my experience. As I mentioned in industry, most of my career has been spent on taking technologies from the lab to the marketplace. So really love um, the partnerships um, to fund entrepreneurial entrepreneurs. Um, I also served in the Obama administration. I was the head of technology transfer within the Department of Energy. Worked. I am uh, calling in from Altadena, California, very close to JPL, uh, where I've worked for many years as well. I currently still serve on a board at NSF um, in the engineering directorate and serve on the board at the University of Rhode Island, where I received my undergraduate in mechanical engineering and Caltech where I received my PhD in aeronautics and recently joined the board of IU, which is International University of Applied Sciences. This is a completely online school in Germany where SAP is based. So just a little background on myself and wanted to share a little bit about SAP. While you may not have heard of SAP, I can guarantee you, you've probably used one of our systems and definitely know many of our customers. And, um, you know, what is our purpose? Our purpose is to help the world run better and improve people's lives. But more importantly, today, SAP solutions are running the most mission critical systems in businesses and organizations globally. And our focus is really to enable our customers to meet their goals and deliver on their purpose. Um, our vision is to have intelligent, sustainable enterprises, and we do this through a global network of businesses. So thank Amazon for businesses and to be able to, for businesses to address any supply chain issues. And the way we do that, I'm really proud that we do this in a very sustainable way. And in fact, I hope, I think the next slide I should just, um, I'll, I'll move forward. This just says a little bit about our customers. Um, again, some of these brands you would, you would recognize um, and some of the things that we do here in helping companies, again, as I mentioned, become sustainable. Um, Sephora, they came across in the need to really improve their employee and candidate experience. And so we help them really revamp their entire um, HR system with our software success factor, um, another piece of software that you I know I use in two jobs prior to joining SAP was um, Concur for travel, which is, is pretty popular. Um, we're very proud to, to count 92% of Forbes Global 2000 companies as customers. And of course, um, besides our customers, we have over 20,000 partners globally. And again, uh, some of these you will definitely recognize. And one of the things I'm most proud about when joining SAP was that Again, besides our own aspiration of zero emission, zero waste, and zero inequality, that we're also working with our customers as well to grow in a sustainable way and also to address their processes to make sure that they're sustainable uh, as possible. And yeah, we'd like to say we build breakthroughs together because we're constantly co-innovating. And just a tiny bit about the company, there's over 100,000 employees worldwide. We have 156 nationalities. And part of the work that I do, and I'll mention that in a minute, is really growing in a sustainable way. And this is why I'm excited to be here today because a big part of my job is making sure that we have a diverse pipeline of students. And not just students, we're also looking outside of the traditional um, student track of, of college grads and, and where else can we help. And that's why I noted we have a number of, um, a lot of resources and we'll continue to grow that. Um, and I'll, I'll mention that in a minute, just again, some numbers there, but um, the work that I do at SAP, as Marie mentioned, I currently lead academies and university alliances and I report directly to our CEO. And this to me just speaks volume of the support that we have within the company and how important this topic is of education. So I have three priorities within my role and that's to inspire, educate, and co-innovate. 
And I think everyone on this call can get behind these three aspirations. But we inspire young people, we teach coding skills to school age children to get them excited about um, coding and developing 21st century skills. We do this in collaboration with Berkeley, and we have a program called SNAP, which is sort of the second iteration of Scratch, some of you may know. We educate, so I mentioned I head up to academies. We have an engineer academy and a sales academy, both in San Ramon, California, a beautiful space. If we ever need a physical location, we'd love to um, offer that space um, to the group. Um, but there we educate our engineers and then also educate sales associates. But we also educate globally in classrooms. Uh, in fact, last week I was at Cal State LA in one of the SAP courses. And, um, and then we co-innovate. We co-innovate with our partners and customers. And during COVID, as um, most courses were online, we found obviously that students were very interested in working on real life challenges. And besides working on these real life challenges, this really gives them a, a heads up and a sort of uh, a, a foot in the door on these companies as well. So they get to work with these company problems. And uh, Maria, I was excited to see um, the new threads that you will be um, announcing in the coming weeks. And one of those was sports and STEM, I believe. And so I just want to mention this partnership that we have with the San Francisco 49ers. I'm in LA, so really looking to have the same partnership with the Rams here. But um, seriously, as we all know, sports, uh, I don't know <laughs> if you have a collects more data, right? And so how do we help the 49ers with their data analytics? across the board, even uh, in concession for um, guest services, and of course, um, on field action. So, and then um, this is, again, this is a free STEM education kit that is part, this is in partnership with the 49er Foundation. And um, before COVID, students could come in and do field trips in um, Levi Stadium, and then also get to participate in some programs. We also recently announced a partnership with MBA as well. And um, let's see, why am I here today? I think here I'm preaching to the choir. I think most of you know the need for um, computer scientists and software developers um, at every field, uh, you know, uh, to, to come in and be a lot more diverse than they are now. And this is one of my passions and this is why I continue to be involved and engage in um, wanting to give back. Um, again, this was a talk that I gave in terms of customizing CS education. Um, this one of the things that excites me and hopefully excites students as well is that STEM workers command higher earnings, right? Um, the non-STEM, than the non-STEM counterparts. Um, and this was a statistic is probably higher than that at this point. But what I'm also excited about that, um, you know, this whole uh the the uh, wage gap. This is I see this as a really good way to address this persistent and unfair wage gap that we continuously have in our country. Um, and so again, this is something that excites me here. Um, and then yeah, just one of the things I try to do is make sure students recognize that um, what the value of a computer science degree and also the fact that um, they should not be afraid of data, right? That they should embrace data because it's really the currency of the future. And, and the way that the way data is applied and it can be very um, unsettling um, in terms of some of these biases that we all know are there. I like to point out, so maybe you know Joy Balawini, who was a MIT grad and started the Justice League and has a Netflix documentary, Coded Bias. Um, and just, again, the way that AI is currently being applied um, across the board, and we're not at the table. Um, so again, I'm here, there's one of my favorite quotes by um, Miriam Wright Elderman, the founder of the Children's Defense Fund, which says you can't be what you can't see. And so my job, and uh, I try to be everywhere where I can be seen. Um, and with that, I'd like to say thank you. Here's just some links if you'd like to stay connected and follow me at LinkedIn, but also our next gen community, which is our student community. If you have a student that wants to stay in touch um, or if there's students on the line here in terms of SAP Next Gen as well. We have Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. 
And with that, I will stop sharing and see everybody. I, I know that was pretty fast, but and if we have time, I'm happy to take any questions. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Does anybody have any questions for Karina about SAP and what SAP offers? I'm sorry, I couldn't see anyone as I was speaking. It's quiet, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I just wanna ask really quickly, uh, Karina, in terms of um, the 49ers program and the NBA programs and the STEM programs, tell us a little bit more about the kits, like what do they contain? Like what what is what happens in those? Yeah, so um, they, first of all, the kids could come in and then there's uh, a number of activities that they come in and they work with the data that the stadium is getting in terms of concessions, you know, how do we, this predictive analytics um, in terms of the number of, of fans that are coming in and ways to um, make the stadium run more efficiency, but also in games, like the, the data that they're collecting for every play, right? Um, and how is that process and to make decisions in the future really. And so there's a number of activities that are already sort of built in and of course, they had to pivot once COVID hit in terms of, you know, they, the kids could come in for a field trip and now they can um, download um, a packet from um, from the 49ers Foundation. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Is And is it for, is it nationwide or West Coast is one of the questions from Tammy. Well, currently, obviously, for the, um, you know, the activities of coming in is for, you um, kids on the West Coast, but we also have SNAP. And so I'll add the link for SNAP, which is really cool. This is a program in collaboration with Berkeley um, that we work with because this um, gives kids an opportunity to learn to learn coding. Um, and this is also a free program. Awesome. Yeah, and um, any, you say that SAP has lots of resources. Can you I know that could take forever to talk about, but can you give us a highlights of some of the other? Sure. So I posted in there the student zone. Um, so we have an entire organization called One Learning, one that employees ourselves can leverage for reskilling and different jobs, but also has um, tons of free learning opportunities. And in fact, one of the things I'm, I'm trying to work on is doing a certification challenge because it turns out, you know, there's a SAP certification that if you have, regardless of your educational background, you can typically come in, you know, commanding a close to $100,000 salary. Um, and I am working, I can't mention right now, but there'll be an announcement in November with a big online um, education service to also have, um, our software, not our software, just, um, yeah, courses to introduce students to to SAP software. Because not only does SAP have a need for hiring these students, our ecosystem, you saw the number of companies that we have. There's um, something like 78% of all financial transactions globally touch an SAP system. And I can tell you, I work with a lot of our partners and customers who are like, they're in desperate need of SAP skilled students, um, employees. And so, um, and like I said, I'm passionate about making sure that our pipeline is as diverse as possible, that we have gender equity uh, within our ranks. And so uh, this is, like I said, it's exciting to see programs like yours to um, that bring in a wider range of, you know, broader background, let's say. Awesome. Yeah. 